I know sports are boring to many of you, but this is going to be interesting. I'll probably have a lot of input on this. I'm a big sports guy myself. It's not the Mets, guys. Scandalous in the world of sports than when a superstar athlete gets caught. Right off here. Anybody remember Road Rash? I know there's a few of you. From doping to ball tampering, they always think they can get away with it. Right up until their dirty deeds are exposed for all the world to see. So, so without further ado, let's take a look at the... See how good we are. This is the Mike Tyson biting the ear of Evander Holyfield. I'm going to assume this is Tom Brady in Deflategate. I don't know what this is. This is going to be More good. I don't know. athletes who got caught cheating. The top right was probably the Astros one. Houston Astros. <laughs> At a work <laughs> Look at that. I know I talked briefly about it. This is a very, very cool one. I'll break some things down to understand it a little bit better if he doesn't. Series baseball game. You can expect to hear the crack of bats hitting balls, the cheers of the crowd, and maybe even some organ tunes. But during the 2017 World Series, spectators at the Houston Astros game started noticing a brand new sound. The Gray is 22 down. years old, but he's already into his third. <laughs> Team by Alfonso Soriano. You heard it too, right? Well, yes. that wasn't the sound of thunder. It was actually the sound of the Astros cheating by stealing signs. In baseball, signs are used to wordlessly relay information between players. All I'm going to break it down too. If you know the pitch a pitcher is going to throw, it makes it worlds easier no matter how good the pitcher is. When a fastball is coming in at 95 miles an hour, you know to swing early. Very simple. Now, when you throw something like a curveball, it's not coming in at 95 miles an hour. It's coming in at 70. When you go from 95 to like 70, you're, you're going to be out in front of it. But if you know a slow pitch is coming, you're sitting and waiting. Boom. If you know a fast pitch is coming, you're prepared. It's just like any reaction with parrying. I gave this example in a video game. If the boss is doing quick hits, you know to parry. Parry. But if that boss slows down and then goes, obviously you're going to parry quick and then he's going to roll you. So knowing the signs is a big deal to help you. While this sign stealing isn't illegal, using equipment like cameras to purposefully do so is. Correct. Sign stealing in baseball, there'll be a guy on second base, he could see the catcher. You could try to relay things to your teammate to be like, bro, he's throwing a fastball. That's not cheating. That's just being a five head. But if you're using equipment, that's cheating. A good example is like in the casino, you're playing blackjack. If you could count cards, you're not going to get in trouble or go to jail. The casino is going to be like, all right, you're out. You could legally do that. You're using your brain. However, if if you're using a machine to count the cards, now you're going to go to prison. Outrageously, that's exactly what the Astros were doing. This setup in the Astros' dugout revealed they were monitoring the opposing team's pitcher and catcher through a live feed. Then they were relaying the signs to so their batters up. by hitting, hitting that trash can. can. Yeah. Like here, where the sign for a break ball is followed by someone hitting the can. So a breaking ball is like a curveball. It means it's a slower pitch coming. But for a fastball, there's no can slam. That means they're ready to swing early. The first pitch. Port. And a lot of them will wait because obviously the slower pitch coming in is a lot easier to hit. They use the dirty, underhanded tactic throughout the 2017 World Series, which they scandalously ended up winning. It's but crazy. then in 2019, the guilt began to consume former Astros pitcher Mike Friars who stepped forward and admitted what they'd done to the press. That's crazy. As you can imagine, their fans were absolutely devastated. But whose bright idea had it been to employ this sneaky scheme? Yeah, Eventually, who? it was all linked back to the Astros bench coach, Alex Cora. That's but right. But shockingly, it was then revealed that Cora had used this same cheat when he was the manager of the Boston Red Sox in 2018. I'm not from Boston. And for Nor anyone that not of that year, the Red Sox also won the world title. Coincidence? Actually snitch though. But I get it. In the end, Cora was suspended, the Astros were fined $5 million, and both the Red Sox and Astros were stripped of their first round draft picks for the coming season. This wasn't a big penalty. $5 million and stripped of the first round is really not a big penalty. That's literally a slap on the wrist. It's Unbelievably, nothing. both teams got it's to keep their cheap one world yeah, title wins. Now, I want to do a quick poll. After what these teams did, do you think they deserved to keep those world World title wins? For no, go ahead and hit that like button. I see what he's doing here. Five head. 
And for yes, smash that subscribe button. Oh. Go on, really hit it out of the park. The Hand of God. What is this? Soccer is often called the beautiful game, although I doubt... I'm gonna in... correct my man here, it's football, okay? In what soon became the most infamous match in history, England got to face off against Argentina on the pitch. The first half of the match passed without any goals at all, but suddenly, Argentina's captain, Diego Maradona, skipped past three England players, slid into their box, and knocked the ball into the goal. Yo. From afar, it looked like he'd used his head to bounce the ball yeah. in, and his freewheeling celebration certainly sold it as yeah. a legitimate goal. He did it? But the referee failed to spot that Maradona had actually used his hand to no. punch the ball in, which is obviously an illegal move. I mean, the English call it football for a reason. Astoundingly, though, there were no yellow cards, no, one no that penalties, up? and the goal was considered valid. The match continued like nothing had happened. No one picked that up? I mean, it is recorded on, you know, a toaster. I'm curious to see when did they realize it. While Maradona went on to score another, more legal goal, England ended up losing by just one. After the match, Maradona audaciously admitted that the goal was scored a little with the head of Maradona and a little with the hand of God. Oh, this wow. left England fans understandably funny. And then he trolled! Yo, I rolled you guys. I used my hand, by the way. Added insult to injury. That's crazy. Ever the football, football associations are incredibly corrupt. Always have been, always will be. Which is why they so vehemently tried to keep video evidence out of decision-making tools. I have heard this. Is that true? As I'm not very big experience in football, but I have heard that from many people. Brian Carrasco. Desperate times call for desperate measures. But even with that being said, soccer player Brian Carrasco went to some disastrously desperate depths back in 2011. With just 14 minutes of the match left, Chile was losing 1-0 to zero and defending against a throw that was deep in their own half. It wasn't looking good for Chile, but instead of using his head, Carrasco decided to use his arm, or more specifically, the arm of his opponent. As the throw was being lined up, Carrasco suddenly grabbed Ecuadorian forward Edson Montano's hand and flung it into his own face. After uh, dramatically you... rolling about on the floor, the referee saw the imagined infraction and awarded a free kick to Chile. He pulled a LeBron. It worked! But unfortunately for him, every second of his dumb charade was caught on camera, wow. and it was replayed over and over on TV while the commentators rightfully laughed at him. I mean, it's a smart move! Wow. That's a handy stunt even Maradona would be proud of. Yeah. Ultimately, this theatrical attempt at cheating was all in vain. Chile missed their free oh, kick, and Ecuador wow. triumphed hey. over them 1-0. That's but the typical thing of the ball never lies. For that performance, I guess you have to give Carrasco a hand. As long as it's not Montano. I, I don't know how, how you guys feel about things like that. Me, I think it's horrible, you know, it's lame. But if you get away with it, it's a five-head move. On an ethics level, it's terrible, but the ref's got to pick it up. How is cheating in golf? I mean, well, there's a variety of ways if you're playing with friends and having some beers. Be like, what'd you get on that hole? And you got like a five? You're like, oh, yeah, I got a four. That's the only thing I could think of. Or, you know, you're with your friends drinking, you know, and you found your ball in the woods and you just kick it out. And it's magically on the field. You're like, yo, I found my ball! When it comes to golf, Next. most people think the sport's biggest cheater is minutes. Tiger Woods. But that's the wrong kind of cheating. Ooh. Damn sits firmly in the hands of Patrick Reed. The 2018 Masters it. champion first came under fire during the 2019 Hero World Challenge when his ball got stuck in a sand bunker. Mm -hmm. All golf fans know that these shots are a real pain to they hit are. because of their awkward angle. Mm -hmm. Stuck in this sandy situation, Reed decided to test out a variety of clubs, but the cameras caught him sneakily shifting sand oh. out of the way with each swing, wow. giving him a cleaner shot. Yeah. Now, 
it's illegal to even ground the club like yeah, this on can. a practice swing. Nope. Never mind shift entire sandcastles worth of sand out of the way. That's why you'll take your practice swings to the side once you ground that club like that. You have to go for it. Not only was he given a two-stroke penalty, but his ball rolled over and off the green. Talk about a stroke of karma. Although his cheating streak didn't end there. In the 2020 US Open, he was caught patting down the rough around oh, his ball wow. to improve his shot. Like I said, grounding the club like this is just not allowed. Yep. And what's even more embarrassing is that once again- I like again, that. Grounding the, the club is like touching a piece in chess accounts. I like that. His seven over par performance oh, lost him the top spot all while he was being called out as a serial cheater wow. online. You'd think that'd be enough for him to learn his lesson, right? No. Boy, oh boy, how wrong you are. As recently as March 2021 at the Arnold Palmer Invitational, spectators were quick to pick up on Reed fiddling and moving the grass behind his ball at the 17th hole. Are you kidding, While bro? no penalty strokes or actions were leveled against him, angry fans sent out a flurry of Damn. irate tweets. And I'll also never understand how professional athletes do this with cameras everywhere. Valentino Rossi. In the high-speed world of Grand Prix motorcycle racing, there are few rivalries as spicy as the one between Marc Marquez and Valentino Rossi. But their ramped-up rivalry reached a boiling point during the 2015 Malaysian uh -oh. Grand Prix. Road as Marquez rash. was getting ready to overtake Rossi on a corner of the 13th lap, the two came within touching distance of one another. But all of a sudden, Marquez's bike dipped <gasps> and crashed, careering him off the track. Fortunately, he walked away uninjured. But Marquez claimed Rossi had purposefully kicked his bike. No, and that's actually replay. from Road Rash, dude. Because you were able to kick and punch in that game. Nine-time world champion Rossi adamantly denied the allegation. Of course. Although he did admit to riding wide on the corner to try and slow Marquez up. After reviewing the footage, the judges sided with Marquez and slapped a three-point penalty on Rossi, forcing him to start at the back of the grid in the next race. Oh, Rossi wow. later accused Marquez of lying to give another <laughs> one of his teammates on the track a winning advantage. But Marquez claimed Rossi kicked him over to take the title. It's How do you have such great cameras everywhere and you can't get any of this? Deflate gate. Oh boy. Now, despite what you may think, the largest scandal to rock the world of American football in the last decade. Also, Tom Brady and his wife are, are breaking up. Is this true? Bro, is he out of his mind? Divorcing her? She's a supermodel. Oh my god. And then also, is she out of her mind divorcing Tom Brady? What's wrong with her? What's wrong with the both of them? You gonna make your move now, Tom Brady is single? Right? Cap. <laughs> wasn't to do with steroids or doping, but with the footballs themselves. Though it actually all started back in 2006. This is when New England Patriots quarterback Tom Brady proposed a new rule to the NFL, that the teams should be allowed to provide their own balls. Tom argued every team likes differently pressurized balls. When Tom Brady asks for something like that, you do it. It's Tom Brady. There are different grips for different air pressure for a better grip on the ball. Himself found a slightly softer ball was easier to catch it and is, throw. Because is. teams always use their own balls when they're on offense, this new rule seemed innocent enough. But following a championship game against the Indiana Colts... Yes, I remember this. And even me, as a Colts fan, I wasn't even whining about this. Which the Patriots won 45-7. to The <laughs> Colts noticed that... That's why I wasn't complaining much about it. Fully deflated, less deflated, we lost 45-7. Doesn't matter. But a shocking 11 of the Patriots' 12 balls did not meet their minimum criteria. One was even a whopping two pounds of pressure short. These softer, easier-to-catch balls had given the Patriots an unfair advantage in their offense. But strangely, all these balls had been checked by officials at the beginning of the game. 
an NFL investigation was launched and Damn. discovered that members of the Patriots locker room staff likely deflated their footballs on purpose after they'd been checked by the officials. But it appeared Tom Brady knew about this, or even worse, no, it had been done on his instruction. <laughs> the NFL slapped. He could do no wrong. I don't want to listen to this. I'm going to close my ears for this part. To Brady with a four-game suspension without pay, and the Patriots were fined a whopping one million dollars. Brady in one million? Oh my God! The Patriots? They had to pay a million? That's the equivalent of us paying twenty bucks. The suspension, which looks like it was going to be overturned, but then he did something so suspicious that it was almost impossible to think he text? was innocent. On the day he was something? due to meet with investigators. He had his cell phone yeah, yeah, destroyed. Yeah. Broke his cell phone. Four yeah, months yeah. of potentially incriminating. Bro, my man Tom Brady just wanted a new phone. I have an old iPhone 8, and when I get a new phone, I'm gonna destroy it too. I don't see a problem with that. Messages and data were irretrievably lost. And despite Brady's numerous excuses, the courts upheld his suspension. Brady continued to fight the ban, but all his petitions were denied. While he's never admitted to the allegations, we can only hope he'll eventually come to grips with the truth as well as a properly pumped up ball. Well, I mean, years later, he won another Super Bowl. Man. It's crazy. Hippolyte Couturier. Who? When it comes to crowning the ultimate cycling cheater, you might think that Lance Armstrong wins by a mile. But trust me, the astounding antics of one Hippolyte Couturier make Armstrong look like a total amateur. Oh, yeah? When the very first Tour de France started in 1903, almost every competitor cheated. Not by something as basic and boring as doping, but by inventing incredible, mind-boggling cheats. Competitors laced each other's shorts with itching powder, they showered the roads with broken glass to slow their rivals to- This is basically just high school. And even hired thugs to beat up opponents mid-race. But even <laughs> beat them all when it came to sheer creativity. Looking like a stereotypical vaudevillain from an old cartoon, he himself fell victim to a cheat in 1903 when another what, they put like laxative in there or something? Cyclist spiked his bottle of lemonade. But when he tried again in 1904, he had his own cheat up his sleeve. Or should I say, in his teeth. At one point of the race, he was spotted trailing swiftly behind the leading car. But a little too swiftly. Looking closer, spectators saw Hippolyte was holding a cork in his mouth that was attached attached to the car by a length of thread. For what? miles, he was towed along like this, leaving his competitors in the dust. And he would have gotten away with it if only the car hadn't been going so fast. He reached the finish line so suspiciously quickly that he was eventually disqualified. Bro, that man deserves it. That's insane. Mike Tyson. Yo. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Mike Tyson in his prime was the best boxer to ever live on this earth. There is no one remotely close. No, it was Lil Mac. Shut the f- <laughs> Most people know Mike Tyson for being the youngest heavyweight boxing champion in the world, or for his huge facial tattoo. But there's another, much more infamous reason why people remember Tyson's name. Crazy. Back in 1997, Tyson went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Evander Holyfield, and in the second round, Holyfield headbutted Tyson. The illegal move looked like an accident, but it enraged Tyson to He's the crazy, point of bro. no return. Yo. In the third round, he spat out his mouth guard <laughs> and, during a struggle, bit a chunk out of Holyfield's right ear. That sounds like Mike Tyson. Lil Mac did beat Mike Tyson. I saw it in the Punch-Out Arena. It's real, I swear. Savannah.